Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain the starting system, uh, diagram and all components on this car. So we're gonna have a look at the wine diagram first. Then we will come back here on the car. I will show you all the components location, how they work together because you're gonna need them for diagnosing the starting system. All right, let's have a look at the wine diagram first. Then we will get back here to show you everything on the car. All right, guys, let's have a look at the wine diagram. So right here, we see the wine diagram for the starting system. I'm gonna go one by one. So here's actually your ignition switch. It means when you insert the key into the ignition switch cylinder, and when you try to crank, you are actually turning the switch from here to this position. All right, it means by doing that, this power supply from this fuse, it's gonna travel all the way from here to the ignition switch and from this part of the switch into this white wire and it will reach to the ip junction box which is actually our interior fuse box so inside the ip junction box we have a fuse fuse f14 10 amp and this is the sign this is actually the start fuse if we have a look at the interior fuse box details so this is actually what we have this is the this is the interior fuse box details. And if you look at here, this 10 amp fuse, this location, this is actually a start fuse. So if this fuse is broken, of course you won't be able to crank the engine. Back in here, after the fuse, we have two options. If your car has brake load alarm or if it doesn't. So if it does have brake load alarm, there's gonna be one relay inside the IP junction box. Basically, if this relay is energized, this switch will be off. And of course, this power cannot travel to the starter relay, so you won't be able to crank the engine. But if your car doesn't have big alarm, this power supply from here is gonna travel to this part. Now we have two options. If your car has manual transaxle or automatic transaxle. So in this case that we're gonna check today, our car has automatic transaxle. We will have this battery positive traveling through the range switch or what we call it inhibitor switch sometimes. So inhibitor switch gives you this possibility to crank the engine only when transaxle is on the park or neutral. So that's why you see PN switch. So when your transaxle is on the park or neutral, you're able to crank the engine. So it comes from here. So this part actually could be one problem for no cranking issue. We're gonna have a look at that one today. I'm gonna to show you the location as well. So this one comes right before the starter relay. If range switch is okay and transmission is on the park or neutral, this battery positive is gonna travel from here, is gonna to reach to this white wire, and then it can go toward the starter relay. So we will have the battery positive arrived on the starter relay right here. And the other end is actually the control line, which is provided by engine control module. But we have something else over here as well. This power supply, which is traveling toward the starter relay, is gonna send a signal to ECM as well to inform the ECM that you are going to crank the engine. So ECM receives this input signal and it's gonna provide this ground to energize the starter relay. So where is the starter relay? This is actually a, a little, uh, complicated on this car. So generally we expect the starter relay to be inside the engine fuse box. Something really accessible, something really easy to reach to. And in this case, you see the starter relay inside a component which is called PCB fuse and relay box. But where is this PCB fuse and relay box? I'm showing you the diagram from the engine fuse box. And once again, I'm gonna show you everything on the car as well. This is what I have on the diagram, and then I'm gonna show you everything on the car as well. So this is the diagram from ER or engine room junction box. And inside the engine fuse box, as you see, we have some fuses, there is no relay. And there is one section here as PCB fuse and relay box. So our starter relay should be here, but there is nothing that we can find on the wine diagram so far. But if I find the PCB fuse box details, I'm gonna have this one. So this is the PCB fuse and relay box details. This is exactly the part that wasn't showing on the engine fuse box. As you see, 
there are many relays inside the PCB fuse box and our starter relay is just right here this is the start relay which is on the rear side of the PCB fuse box so if I reach to the PCB fuse box I should be able to find the starter relay so I'm going to show you guys how to locate and find this one on the car as well so back on the wind diagram when this battery positive is provided and of course when this negative is provided by the ECM this relay will be energized so when the relay is magnetized it's going to close this switch and again the battery positive from here is going to travel all the way to start solenoid here you see the start solenoid here you see the start solenoid much bigger than the starter motor itself just only because this wind diagram is going to show you more details on the starter solenoid so in here we have actually two windings as you see one of them which is this one this one is pulling winding and this one is holding windings there is another video on the channel i'll put the link on the description for you guys to see how we can check these two on the starter solenoid itself so this one is holding this one is pulling winding so when this power reaches to the starter solenoid the starter solenoid is going to get magnetized because these two are actually going to generate magnetic field and when the when magnetic field is generated this plunger is going to travel in when plunger moves it's going to pivot this lever to engage the pinion gear and at the same time it's going to close this contact so this contact is actually for providing the high current from the battery on the starter motor so generally we name them as s terminal for the starter relay b terminal which comes directly from the battery and this one is the m terminal which takes the battery current from here to the starter motor so right now we have all the details let's go on the car let's check everything on the car to see uh, where these components are located and what we can do for it all right guys we already checked the wind diagram for the starting system so here is the starter motor itself but i'm gonna start from other components i already showed you the start fuse inside the ip junction box for this car which is kia rio the next important component for the starting system before reaching to the starter motor and the solenoid itself is a starter relay and as i showed you on the wind diagram uh, a starter relay is supposed to be inside a part which is pcb fuse and relay box what we have here and pcb fuse box is inside the engine fuse box so this is our engine fuse box as you see we have some fuses but there is no relay so this section is actually our pcb fuse box to reach to the starter relay we need to remove the pcb fuse box from here then we can reach to the starter relay and then i'm going to show you some important points for removing the pcb fuse box we need to remove these two connections so first of all we need to disconnect the battery negative terminal then we go for these two and now we can disconnect these two cables and for removing the pcb fuse box there are two connectors underneath but more importantly there are some clipses here holding the pcb fuse box in place so you need to be careful to release them one by one and then you can pull the PCB fuse box upward all good so now we have the PCB fuse box out there is one connector here that we need to disconnect first okay we need to pull this one out pull this lock out and the first connector is gonna come off okay this is the first connector there is another one okay so these two connectors so now we have the PCB fuse box let's have a look at this one to see how, where we can find the starter relay so as you see on the wind diagram at the rear side of the PCB fuse box I should have some relays including the cooling fan relays and down here the starter relay but of course right here i don't have anything i re i need to remove this back cover to reach to the starter relay okay so i'm gonna just need to remove this part do it very carefully it's very fragile
okay? Here are our relays. So it means on this car, because they wanted to make the fuse box really compact, they put all the relays inside. So, and these are not the only relays we have. On the other side of these boards, we have some other relays like the main relay, even the wiper relay, fuel pump relay, they are all located on the other side of this part of the fuse box. These two are the cooling fan relays, and this one is the starter relay. If you check the wind diagram, and you see that there should be a relay inside the fuse box. And later on, on the fuse box, you don't see any relay like what I showed you. Most likely the relay is connected inside the fuse box. So I cannot take this relay out. Kia and Hyundai want you to replace the entire component with when any of these relays is broken. But basically we can use a heater to disconnect this one from the board, replace it with a new one. This is the relay itself and i try to show you guys how to do it on another video this relay gets the power from the uh, inhibitor switch so this is right before the starter solenoid itself so we know the location of the starter relay on this car let's have a look at the other components this is the inhibitor switch which is located on the transmission so basically when you put the transmission on park or neutral uh, you can start the engine so it means the power supply comes from that a starter fuse into the inhibitor switch and if the inhibitor switch is okay and of course transmission is on the park or neutral there will be an output from here to the starter relay that i just showed you this could be actually one cause for no cranking basically sometimes the inhibitor switch itself is broken you're gonna need to check the connector as well just in case if uh, this one is actually causing a problem the other one is actually the inhibitor switch adjustment. Uh, when transmission is on the neutral, this arm should be located exactly at this point. It means these two holes should be exactly on the same line. Let me just put the transmission on the neutral and I'm gonna show you how they should be exactly on the same point. So as you see, transmission is on neutral and these two are actually pointing to each other. If inhibitor switch is not actually adjusted, you need to loosen it and adjust it on the neutral position to make sure these two are exactly pointing toward each other. So this is from the neutral switch. This is the starter motor and this part is a starter solenoid. So on the solenoid, we have actually one connector, which is here. Okay. So this is the connector itself. As you see, there is only one pin inside the connector this one comes from the starter relay it means there should be battery voltage on this wire when you try to crank the engine so when you crank the engine the power supply from here gets to the solenoid solenoid gets the ground from the body and it does have the power here as well so it's going to get magnetized so inside the solenoid there are two windings pulling and holding windings they're going to work together to create enough magnetic field to pull the plunger in because there is a plunger inside the solenoid. When that plunger moves, it's gonna perform two functions at the same time. First of all, it's gonna push the pinion out to engage the pinion with flywheel and it's gonna connect the contact for these two terminals. So this terminal comes from the battery, bringing the high current from the battery on the starter and this one goes to the motor itself. So when solenoid is energized and activated and plunger has moved these two terminals will be connected to each other and the battery power from here is going to travel to the starter and the starter operates for testing the starter solenoid there is another video on the channel i put the link on the description so you can watch that one to see how we can test the solenoid pulling and holding windings all right guys so this was a practical explanation of the wind diagram and the components involved on the starting system I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to make another video uh, to explain all different type of starter motors. And I'm going to dismantle them as well to show you guys how they work. So please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get the notification when we upload those videos.